This podcast is brought to you by Marcus Rodriguez. If you're looking to buy or sell your home in this competitive market and you're not too sure where to start, look no further than Merced's preferred realtor, Marcus Rodriguez. He'll make sure the process goes as easy as possible and you can reach him at 209-554-1715. Go to his website, www.myagentmarcus.com or email him at info at myagentmarcus.com. This podcast is brought to you by Thor. If you're in the Central Valley area and you're looking to get a tattoo, look no further than this dude right here. He's a versatile artist that specializes in black and gray realism. He works in Merced at the Merced Tattoo and Piercing Company, and if you'd like to get in contact with him, the best way to do that is to stop by the shop. And if you can't do that, then find him on Instagram. His Instagram handle is at underscore T-H-O-R-E-E-E-E-E. That's at underscore Thor with five E's. This episode is brought to you by Be Junk Free Merced. Everybody has stuff taking up space, but not everybody has time or the equipment to do something about it. That's where Scott Levesey comes in. Scott is the owner of Be Junk Free Merced, and if you have junk overtaking your garage, yard, spare room, or even a storage unit, give him a call at 209-233-1519. Once again, that's 209-233-1519. He'll get back to you with an estimate and be there as soon as possible. This podcast is brought to you by Duffy Murphy. Whether you need studio time, mixing and mastering services, or even someone to clean up that podcast audio to make sure you sound professional, look no further than Duffy Murphy. He's your guy. And trust me, because he's my guy. You can find him on Instagram at Duffy Murphy or email him duffy.murphy at yahoo.com. Once again, that's duffy.murphy at yahoo.com. That's a round of applause for all of the beautiful sponsors and all the wonderful sponsors that the podcast has. Uh, This upcoming month, we are going to have a couple more sponsors. And once again, if you guys are out there and interested in becoming a sponsor of the show, just reach out to me on my Instagram. It's Central Valley Podcast, and I can get you in the works. Or email me, MikeDalyMedia at gmail.com, and we can get something in the works for you guys. Now... Before we jump into the episode, welcome back to the show, you guys. I'm your host, Mike Yaley, and if you're new here, this is a podcast where I highlight the talented individuals that live within the Central Valley of California, as well as people in general who are passionate about what they do. Now, before we go into the show, I want to talk about reviews and downloads and just making sure you are engaged with whatever whatever you're using to watch the podcast. So if you're watching the podcast on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you're giving thumbs up. If you're listening to it on Apple Podcasts, make sure you're leaving a review. The last review was over a year ago. So come on, people. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and do me a favor and leave a review. And if you're watching this on Spotify, I think they just have a star system where you can rate stuff. So do that. And if you're listening on any other podcast app, you know, just do whatever you can on those as well. And once again, if you're watching this or if you're if you're only listening to this, please do me a favor and go over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Just type in Real Talk Studios, Mike and Yaley. Type in any of my guest names. It should be the first or second thing that comes up. And uh, I just want to, you know, once again, make sure that people know that there is a show. There is a podcast about the talented individuals that live in the Central Valley of California because a lot of people don't know. So I'm just trying to spread that word out there, you guys. Now, in this week's episode, I interviewed a really cool dude by the name of Scott Patrick. Now, Scott and I ran into each other when I did a photo shoot. Well, we ran into each other multiple times. I filmed for Blaker. He was uh, performing on the stage a couple times. Got a couple different videos of him. But then uh, he reached out to me and hired me to take some photos of him while he's performing at the Mainzer. And this is one of my favorite photo shoots that I've done. The pictures came out so good. Maybe I'll put a couple right there maybe not I don't know let's see if I want to edit it that much you know uh and uh it was just really cool photo shoot and from there our relationship kind of grew and I reached out to him about a month ago asked him if he wanted to do the podcast he said he'd be honored to and he came on the show and talked about how he got into music the music career the journey has taken him and just like going from kind of like a slumdog rock star to where he is now. You know, he just lived, used to live out of his van, just the, the the rock star lifestyle. And we talk about it all. We talk about, you know, his high school bands to when he first got into music to uh, where he is today to his time in Nashville. So it was just a really good conversation. And I really, really enjoyed uh, what he brought to it. He even performed two songs. He performed one in the beginning and one at the end of the podcast. And they were just really, really, really great songs. So, I'm going to stop talking, and without further introduction, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Scott Patrick. Bam. This is it. Real talk. What not? Real talk. That's it. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> I 
I felt bad because uh, my my one of my best friends he was like uh, into music and any, and everything. His name's Duffy, and uh, he had all my podcast audio. And then we finally got new mics, and and like he was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> just like he had to like put all these filters, do all this stuff because like the mics. It were, just didn't sound right. Yeah, it just yeah. Sounded, and it to be fair, like he made it sound like 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 these almost like, I mean, like how these sound. And it was, yeah, it's just so funny to it's me. It's all just post editing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how. But, that's the difference between recording at at home in recording the studio, you could have all the great equipment at home, but if the room isn't quite right, or or if you can have a great room but a crappy mic, it's gonna take so much post editing just to get it up to par to where you want. Yeah. And and before, I mean I had terrible mics that I would record with at home, but I made it sound like professional quality, but it mm-hmm. also took me weeks longer to master it yeah and, yeah and, and fine-tune every exactly. single thing it's, yeah and i used to like that's like why uh when i first started it like uh he was like you gotta you gotta get the foam pads like, oh yeah. you have to like, yeah like and before it, and it was just like because used to be at, at my house one of the rooms and that room was like just like i mean not as much as this this room this room uh was a little more echoey like <laughs> but still. Wasn't, it wasn't built to last i don't think but actually the, i think this building is was built in like my great grandma lived here so it's got to be oh, old wow. and apparently there's to be a 
the building in front of us used to be a radio station. Oh yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. yeah, and so like my my when my dad first checked out this place, he was like he was like, oh yeah, they used to have like all windows, so you could see like the guy moving a record over here, to there, to oh, play, wow. like on, and like and it was just like you could just drive by or just like chill and like listen to it. I'm like, man, that's really cool. That's cool, yeah. I forgot what it was called. Somebody like saw the address the other day, and they're like, is this where the old blah 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 media used to be i'm like exactly that's exactly where it is <laughs> but no so, yeah like you said you, you can't fix a bad room yeah exactly yeah. and that's and is that so when you're like recording for uh because i feel like recording instruments is a like a lot of people can set up a place to rap you know what i mean mm -hmm. and because because you're not playing all these instruments like yeah you just need to get your isolate. vocals yeah you just need yeah. to get your vocals isolated so what's the process like when you're like going to record is it like at home I, I don't do too much recording at home. No, these but what days. about what about a studio though? Oh, like studio. I'm saying, uh, like what's the, like the difference almost of like like you have so many more steps. I feel like. Oh well, the biggest difference from home in the studio is you walk in the studio. They've got everything they need to sound good. They got the best mics. I mean, yeah. you're singing into a ten, fifteen thousand dollar microphone. Yeah. They've got everything set up. They've got walls of racks of mm -hmm. different processors that are already set up, ready to go. Mm -hmm. So that takes out. 60 70 percent of the post-production work yeah. right there so it just mm -hmm. the, the track you get is just it sounds better than anything you can get unless you build it in your, yeah unless same you stuff build in your the house. same exact thing so what's the difference between like a 15 ten thousand dollar microphone to like oh once you once you use as many mics as, as, I, as I have <laughs> and then you get up to one of those it when you hear it back it's just it blows you away i mean it sounds like everything you grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that quality. Yeah. And well, didn't, uh, didn't, isn't like the whole sure, what's so popular, the Joe Rogan mic, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, there's a selling point on one of them. I was like looking at like, looking at guy, uh, buying them and one of the selling points was like, Michael Jackson recorded Thriller on this microphone. <laughs> but it's just like, it's like so funny that that's a selling point too. <laughs> it, it, I mean, when someone of that prestige um, <laughs> uses that, you're like, okay, it's gotta be good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, but it's just so funny. I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm not gonna use anything like that for mine, but. Uh, nah, I mean, it's. Those it, mics, those mics are good. Uh, they're really good, but they piss me off by how much more expensive they are. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're like three feet. I just couldn't get myself to spend $700 on two mics. You know, oh, I get it. I yeah. mean, the, the, I, I got some new mics for my guitar. It was about like a year and a half ago, and I've used them maybe f five, six times. Mm -hmm. And I paid, I think it was like 800 bucks for a pair. yeah. And but they're the tiniest little things. They're uh, they're, oh, they're the ones like for so if you're playing like acoustic, they go yeah. They're, the, they're like the long, thin, um, small, small diaphragm condenser mics. Mm -hmm. They're Neumann brand. So Neumann is is one of the most popular brands. Oh, okay, gotcha. There's Neumann. There's it's uh, almost like a little lapel. Not lapel. It's not lapel because lapel means plugging it in. But I mean, mm -hmm. it's so small, like a tiny. It's mic. about the same. Yeah, this type of small diaphragm. Yeah. The the diaphragm is about the size of like a nickel. Oh, okay, and gotcha. Lapels typically they're a little bit smaller. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, they're like tiny, tiny. But I mean, they're the similar kind of mic as in a lot of lapels. They can be condenser microphones, mm -hmm. or they can just be uh, dynamic. I are these condenser or dynamic? <laughs> I think they're condenser, honestly. Condenser. But, yeah. but my sound guy's probably yelling. <laughs> why, yelling why he's doing? It. He's like, you idiot! They're not. They're dynamic. <laughs> I don't know. If, uh, if you have to use phantom power, they're probably condenser. Oh, oh so uh, we don't have to use. Like any power to power them up or anything like that, and okay. like everything like runs like, it's funny because with we had thought we had to have this audio interface plugged in, mm -hmm. and uh, recently I was like, you know, I just plugged it into my computer, and then it was unplugged there, like on on the oh wall. your computer your computer power yeah it. yeah and I yeah. didn't we didn't realize that, and I was like, did you know that <laughs> like we don't need this <laughs> thing plugged in the whole time for no mm -hmm. reason, and it's it's interesting because sometimes you need to turn it on for some devices, but like yeah, so these are probably dynamic yeah, then. so these you don't need to turn it on. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that that makes sense. Condensers usually have to draw power from somewhere. Yeah, and that's what I heard with like the Joe Rogan mics or whatever. People get the thingy that like makes it a little louder or something like that. It's yeah, like, they usually have like a preamp. Yeah, that's it. what it is. Yep. That's what it is. Yeah, these these yeah. little tube drivers. That, yeah, yeah, that's that, exactly yeah. what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I went on my other buddy's podcast and uh, he had like he had those. He had the whole setup, and then he said. Uh, it's like a instead of I use my computer to record, and other people use like basically a separate thing so that like if my computer crashes. Who knows? You know uh, yeah, I mean? we're, we're the other thing's not going to crash because and it can hold like, out like thousands of hours. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. I use I use my Mac for everything. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, dude, I'm the same way. I'm a Mac guy too, and it's also if you're a creative person, I feel like. How can you not use a Mac in the sense of AirDrop, man? Oh, yeah. AirDrop it, is the best it, thing in the world. It's amazing. If I wanted to 
pop the song onto my phone real quick, run out to my car, yeah, listen to it. Exactly. And <laughs> exactly. I can do that right there. Because I do a hello photography and videography. Oh, so yeah. like it's the same thing. It's like, okay, I need to watch it right here. Now let me send it to my phone. Let me watch it on my phone. Let me hear how my speakers on my phone are sounding versus the speakers in my car. Oh yeah, you gotta wherever. bring yourself down to the consumer level <laughs> yeah. and see how people are gonna consume yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And most of the time it's like, okay, let's be real. Eighty percent people are watching this through their phone. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it, if, if 80, 80 is being yeah, generous, it's, pretty generous. It's, it's, it's more than that. Exactly. Also, uh, cheers for being here. Why don't you introduce yourself, Cheers Scott? for having me. Of My course. name is Scott Little, or Scott Patrick Little. People who grew up with me know me as Scott Little. People who listen to me these days probably know me as Scott Patrick. Mm -hmm. When I went out to Nashville years ago, there's a Scott Patrick out there already. Oh, really? No, there's a Scott Little out there already. Oh, really? So uh, I decided to use the whole... Scott middle Pat name. Are you thing. like Irish or anything? I'm or Scottish, Scottish and Irish. Okay. Yeah. So you Scott got them Patrick's both? <laughs> best Dang. of both <laughs> white boy <laughs> <laughs> complexion worlds, I guess. Yeah. You got the red hair, pale skin. I love beer and I have a kilt. So. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I've seen on your TikTok videos that the kilt's pretty popular, huh? Yep. Hashtag kilt talk. <laughs> is, there, is, is, that a, is that a thing? Apparently. Oh, I, really? I didn't know it was until people started. Real, real talk and kilt talk. Real talk <laughs> there we kilt go. talk. There we go. <laughs> That's cool. So where were you born and raised? I was born in Long Beach, California. Okay. Raised up in Mariposa, California. And how soon did you move to Mariposa when you were a kid? Just a baby. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So like no time at all. No time at all. Nope. I mean, <laughs> didn't a couple get days. That. The beard gives it off. I'm just going to hear like I'm the more of the mountain vibe. Yeah, <laughs> I knew I was going to be a musician because I, I was already on the road <laughs> yeah. a couple days after I was born. So I was <laughs> already on the highway. Part. Exactly. Getting used to it. Mm -hmm. So you're born and raised in Mariposa. Yes, sir. That's awesome. And grew up there, everything? Grew up there, elementary school, high school, uh, graduated 2000. Five, 2005 and went to college San Luis Obispo area quest to college uh -huh. wasn't smart enough for Cal Poly played too much <laughs> music and had too much fun did you go to school for music um not necessarily I went to school for my AA uh -huh. and I did uh, recording arts as a as a my minor oh so, okay gotcha yeah so I mean kind of so I, I, I learned a you, lot you learned what you wanted to <laughs> yeah a, a lot of the stuff I use these days and I've used for the last few decades I learned in college that's Just cool. Tips and tricks. And so, would you always play music growing up, or how did what did where I, did your first encounter with a musical instrument come from? Well, I played. Uh, I always loved music when I was a kid. I never really thought about playing it until like the fourth grade. They uh, started a school band in uh, elementary okay. school, so I thought, you know what, let me try, give it a shot. I wanted to play trumpet. When I went out there to pick up my instrument, they did an after school program. Uh -huh. All the kids got to pick out their instruments. They were out of trumpets, so I didn't really? play that. So what, uh, I wanted to play the euphonium. Like which the, one's the euphonium? Like a baritone. Okay, what's it's, a baritone? It's, it's, like a, <laughs> like the, it's like a small tuba. Pretty oh, much. okay, okay, yeah. okay, gotcha, gotcha. And uh, they were out of those. So all they had left was the uh, trombone. And you're so a trombone? So I picked up the trombone. <laughs> so I played that all the way through elementary school, middle school, high school. Really? You and stuck it, with that one? I mean, I mean, you were like... Soul that. Oh, that was. That you was weren't gonna thing. try to switch to. Anything. You weren't gonna try to go back to the trumpet or whatever. Nah. No, once, <laughs> once I hit that slide, it was, it yeah. was good to go. It's just a, that sound, man. It's a sleazy instrument. Uh -huh. It's just, yeah. And so, did you from there start picking up other instru instruments? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I started playing guitar in uh, middle school because I wanted to be. I wanted to have, Who, have more Day? fun. Green Day? I'm trying to think about the popular I, I bands. <laughs> my thing was Weezer. Weezer? Oh, dude, oh, Weezer's good. He was huge into Weezer. I could probably just pick up my guitar and play the whole Blue album dude, start Weezer's to finish so right now. Oh, I, I love it. I, I love, like, the old, old... I don't know. It's like something about, like... It's almost... It's nostalgia now, honestly, especially oh, for yeah. us. Uh, but, like, like the old rock... like Because I... I mean, I'm probably wrong here, but, like, what I think of, like, the last of, like, the rock bands that I... At least that, that I can think of is, like... Like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Foo Fighters. Like it oh, almost yeah. seems like that era is like, like you don't think of many rock bands past that era. Mm -hmm. Oh I yeah, guess. yeah. After that, it, all the pop punk started coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all the different. New metal. The new metal. Okay, I didn't realize new metal is like rap. Like, like so. Like, well, it's, I don't know who it is, but I. I was like hanging out with these people and they're like, "Oh, I love this song." And it was like crazy metal. And then all of a sudden, the guy comes on and he just starts like. What I would call, what I at least what I would call rapping, you know what I mean? Was like, this like Hollywood and Dead? Or no, no, something? no, I know it's not Hollywood and Dead, <laughs> okay. dude. I used to love Hollywood and Dead. Though. No, I wasn't knocking on them. <laughs> no, 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 but no, but uh, no, I forget. You giving you directions? <laughs> my, my phone's talking to me. <laughs> oh Siri, she's listening. I forget what who it was, 
But uh, it was a uh, I know so many so many chords. Isn't that crazy with audio that like oh. I thought there would like I was like I would have thought by now they would have figured out something for these wires, but uh, I no. guess they're just like. There's nothing that can be like a wire. I mean, so they have wireless mics, but when it comes to other things, it's when, just... When it comes to recording stuff like podcasts and, and, mm-hmm. and music, you don't want anything wireless. That makes that's sense, trust me. Because that just causes yeah. latency issues. I mean, oh, gotcha. everything you hear is like millisecond or yeah. something behind. And even like, it's funny because the way that like GarageBand records is different than the way like the video is recording. And oh, yeah. So, yep. you know, when I land up, it's always like I have to stretch out the audio Maybe half a second, maybe mm-hmm. one second, but it's like imagine it up. Yeah, pain. yeah, it's so annoying. And I thought I was like, maybe there'll be yeah, an easier way. So Actually, you just gotta get the. I always snap yeah, my fingers before I record. Yeah, yeah. That way you just. Line <laughs> I just up pick the. the beginning, yeah, and you're I just good. pick one of the. I'm like, all right, what, what, which ones look similar? Let's line up these guys. Mm-hmm. Especially when you start mixing up the the audio clips and the video clips. Yeah, and then yeah. They're yeah. just shooting yourself in the foot. Exactly, exactly. That's funny. And so you started playing. You know, middle school picked up guitar, mm-hmm. and then you start singing. When? Oh, is this the beginning or? Well, me and my friends, we all kind of got instruments around Christmas in eighth grade. You started like, a band? I, I wanted drums at first, but I ended up getting guitar. I'm left-handed, or left-handed, <laughs> but the music shop didn't have a left-handed guitar, so I got a right-handed one, which is a blessing now because I can pick up anybody's guitar now. And, I, and do, you, do you play? I play right-handed. Right-handed, okay. So, yeah. That's yeah. funny because so I, uh, I mean, it's different, but it's the same, but uh, like I, uh, all my life, I'm a, I, was a, I, uh, I batted left-handed. Okay. All my yeah. life. Batted left-handed, batted left-handed, and then I was playing golf in high school, and I was like, I'm going to go golf left-handed. My dad's like, no, it's too hard to find left-handed golf club. Oh. You're golfing right-handed. And so I, I, I golf right-handed, <laughs> like, but I bat left-handed. And like, <laughs> I, I can't golf left-handed mm-hmm. to save my life. And I, I can swing a bat a little better than I can golf left-handed, but freaking. I, I, I golf left-handed. And I've only really? had two sets of clubs my whole life. And they're why, both huh? used. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to find. It's so weird, though, because you would think that. Like, wouldn't you think that somehow, like, like that would be more common? Like, there's... Like, maybe it's like Think of all 30, batters. 70%. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So at least 30% of all batters are probably, like, left-handed, oh, which yeah. is, like, obviously there's more right-handed, but, like, golfers, <laughs> it's the complete opposite. Yeah, you don't hear any uh, <laughs> southpaw golfers. They're all <laughs> southpaws, all baseball. Man. Yeah, that's so, I don't know why that is. I, I have no idea. That's so weird now that I think about mm-hmm. it. Because, like, oh, my God. It, and it was funny because it, it was just a fact when my dad told me. It was like, no, 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 you're going to be right-handed. And I was like, okay, like, I guess. Like, whatever. That works with me. I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to. But it was like when I was a kid when he was doing it. And I remember, like, when I was a mm-hmm. kid, I was like, no, like, left-handed. And he was like, no, right-handed, dude. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss golfing. I used to golf a, dude, a lot with my dad growing up. But uh, he, he still golfs all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm, no, I'm same here, dude. I, I feel like I, I used to golf all the time, like, growing up. And then... I, used, I had been golfing the past couple of years, like, off and on, but, like, I haven't golfed in, like, almost a year now, I mm-hmm. feel like. And it's just, like, it's one of those things where I know I'll, I'll love it. And I, I've hit, I've gone to, like, driving range and stuff. I just haven't, like, oh, yeah. gone out. I think it's been, like, five, six years or longer for me. Oh, damn. A long time. I just Best m- off those me- clubs. <sighs> oh, man, I don't even have my clubs anymore. <laughs> I sold them. Come on, man. You know how hard it is to find left-handed clubs. I know, I know. But they just they were in a garage, and they got infested by, like, rodents and stuff, and there's just <laughs> rat crap everywhere. I'm like, you know what? Let's just start fresh one yeah, day. That's funny. Okay, so back to so, the, back to back the to sorry, I do I go off a tangent. That's all right. Back to you and your friends all were kind of singing, right? Yeah, you I, wanted drums. Yeah, I, I wanted drums, but I ended up getting guitar, right-handed guitar. So I learned how to play right-handed. Um, my other buddy, he got guitar. Another friend of mine got bass. Another buddy of mine got drums. So, so you had the whole band. We had the whole band. We started just jamming around middle school to. What was your middle school band name? You know, we didn't have a band yet in okay, middle school. Okay. When we got into high school, and that's when the band when the came. band started. I mean, I was still playing trombone. I was in the jazz band, okay, the marching band. But you band. were just kind of doing everything, was, everything music related. Yeah, anything. I, then, yeah, yeah. So I did that. We just got our band together. Uh, freshman or sophomore? I think it was sophomore year. We finally got the band together. Mm-hmm. We started practicing in my buddy William's garage mm-hmm. and my other buddy Ben his garage. So we were just bouncing around between different garages mm-hmm. and. I was I was lead guitar. My buddy Ben is rhythm. We all wanted to sing. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh huh. I feel like normally it's like everyone's like needs to look for a singer in bands and everyone like yeah, compared we, to compared to everybody wanting. To, we were yeah. just a bunch of people competing to be lead singers, but we're all just. I mean, we we all wrote songs, uh-huh. so we all kind of switched off on some songs, kind of like the Eagles in a way, but not nearly as good. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like the. 
I don't know what you call it. What are the Hawks? <laughs> I'm just the, kidding. I was trying the to think bagels. Of, yeah, there we go. I was trying to think, <laughs> trying to think of a different type of bird. The sea, no. The seagulls Not, a little too down there. Yeah, I was going to say the pigeons too, and I was like, no, no, no. That's we weren't a quite more. a flock of seagulls either. No. Yeah. But so we just started playing this rock. Uh -huh. uh, we, we first learned Weezer. Weezer was the first thing we learned. We learned Sadie and So. We wrote a song that sounded like Chicago, uh -huh. but <laughs> not. It was like, it sounded like the outskirts of Chicago. Yeah, yeah. And then we just practiced. We ended up playing our first show at a Relay for Life event oh, up really? in Mariposa. But it was pouring down rain, so they had to set up in the bleachers. So uh -huh. we were all standing in different levels in the bleachers. The drummer's on the ground with a tarp over him. Uh, it rain's pouring down just, on him. That like sounds like a music video. It, you know what I mean? The fact that was. you guys are like all separate. <laughs> oh yeah, we all had like long like, hair. Some, is there like is this some artistic part of their their show? Like no, <laughs> like, no, this wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> we played like four songs, and one of the song, two of the songs was the same song. We just played one twice as fast because it sounded like reggae when we played it faster. It was it was weird, but it was cool. We were uh, that's funny. The name, um, it's kind of kind of weird. You know how kids are. Yeah, and, you know I, that's yeah. why that's why I was like, "What's the name of the band?" Because I so we were we just took a trip to Pismo Pismo Beach. We were with one of my friend's moms. We were all just in the back seat just when being kids. Sorry, when you're talking to it, just go like oh. a fistful from it. Like that, that, that that's perfect right Nelly. there. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So we were on the way back from Pismo or Monterey, one of the two. We were just playing in the dunes all day, being guys yeah. jumping off the. Dunes. And this was roll. all high school? It's all high school. I think this was in this was still in sophomore year. Okay, gotcha. And we weren't the cool kids. We were the weirdos. And we were uh the band kids, huh? The band kids. <laughs> we were the weird yeah. So we were just being kids, just yelling out runny funny random sentences. We're like uh and one of them came out like kamikazes. Mm -hmm. And then was, another friend was like, in spandex. We we're like, and I was comedex. They're like, wait. Let's use that as a band name. We're like Comedex. Really? Comedex? C O C O M M A D E X. What is, is that anything? No, it's kamikazes and spandex. Okay, okay, that's but with a, the C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we spelled it wrong. <laughs> so the Comedex and, and Comedex and, and that was your sophomore year, and you guys were Comedex all through high school. All through high school and the first year of college. Really? Mm -hmm. What broke up the band, man? What broke up we Comedex? All just, we needed that. We all just kind of dropped out of college <laughs> one by one. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up partying too much. I ended up surfing too much. And, and so, where did you go to college again? Sorry, where'd you San Luis Obispo. San Luis Obispo. So, so you surfed out there? Yeah, Pismo every morning before class. Really? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that, that's awesome. I mean, I may look, not look like I have a surfer body, <laughs> but I did back then. So, from from the mountains, and then in college, you're a surfer boy, pretty much. Oh yeah, there's a big community of Mariposa that that lives down in San Luis Obispo. Like it was. Like a, a thing for Mariposa folks to, to leave the mountains to go to the beach. Really? Go to the opposite <laughs> of what we grew up with to fi try to find something different. That's so funny. It's like that youth rebellion. <laughs> Rebel against the mountains. We're Join going, the ocean. We're leaving the mountains. I'm going to the coast. <laughs> the air over here is so much fresher. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and we move back a couple years later, our cars are all rusted. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell, man? Oh, yeah, huh? So it's like if you spend a lot of time by the... By the yeah, it's just harder on vehicle. I mean, that didn't really happen but yeah no no but right but like vehicles by the ocean oh yeah har harder because the salt in the, the, salt air, in the air, much, yeah it just right? oxidizes everything a lot faster I know, I know yeah i know stuff ru rust over there quicker yeah yeah rust and if you have any fleck in your paint the rest is going to get in there and dang yeah i mean it's not it, it's it's just a common thing yeah yeah i there. know but yeah because i remember we bought a i think i don't know somebody in my family bought a car and i think it was like on the east coast somewhere and they like mm -hmm. brought it over here but like the whole like underneath was like all rusted or oh. like it was just like like and then we're like oh that's why like, well yeah they also have a lot more snow yeah and stuff that gets up in underneath and the salt they put on the they road on the road probably doesn't mm -hmm. help it either no huh? yeah that's that's bad for undercarriage that's why a lot of car washes have the undercarriage wash oh out really? here in california is kind of pointless because we don't have salty roads so it's just kind of a scam you yeah pay extra for the undercarriage wash yeah, yeah, there's no yeah. point unless you're out in the mud yeah with like or like my kind of car there or yeah yeah so, yeah, your yeah. car's pretty cool. I like it a little Thank FJ. You. Thank um, you very much. And me and my wife have a Jeep. Jeeps yeah, are great. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just love them. Oh, yeah. I've always wanted an off-road vehicle. The main reason I got that, well, two main reasons. One. Carry your gear? Well. Three main reasons. I'm just kidding. <laughs> my vehicle that I've been touring in the last couple years is a Camaro. Oh, really? All my equipment, all my whole PA, multiple guitars, so kick drum, all that, it fits in the Camaro. 
Really? Played a lot of Tetris growing up. All, yeah. all three of my speakers go in the backseat, the guitars in the trunk, stands in the trunk. But I'm sure uh, unloading it's oh, a little it's bit a pain. of a bitch. Yeah. Unloading and reloading is a pain because I have to do it the same exact way. Oh, yeah. And then, well, and then you're like, well, I'm not trying to, to tear or like, like you're trying to mm. place it in nicely. Oh, yeah, and have leather interior. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, what I'm it's, saying. You're, it's, like, it's you're like, okay, I don't need to drag this across. <laughs> Every time I load and unload it, I, I felt the car gods cursing me. Uh-huh. So eventually I just thought, you know what? The last straw was when it snowed last year, and I couldn't leave my house because of my Camaro. Like, my driveway, it goes up a hill, <laughs> and it was all snowed over, and I just moved into the I'm place. I'm surprised that you'd have a Camaro compared to, to having something a little more— Because, I mean, it snows in Mariposa. I guess not not recently it hasn't been. Not too much. But, I mean, this past year, I mean, this past winter it did, Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, I mean, we get at least a couple inches every year. Yeah, Depends it just, on where it just you doesn't live. stick, huh, in No, it, it doesn't stick around for more than a couple of days or sometimes a week or two. Oh really? But yeah, I got the Camaro because he was a uh, went through a a crisis. Uh-huh. Like I went through a, a divorce. Yeah, and it was my gift to myself. You're like, you know what? <laughs> I need a cool car. <laughs> yeah. So I need something red and fast. <laughs> So I could outrun all the single ladies Dude, chasing after knew, me. Yeah, you needed that, man. You, there's no way you couldn't go, couldn't go on without it. That's exactly. what I think. Yeah. I was a new man. Yeah. Do you have a name for your for? I kind of joked about it. Joked about it. They call her Cammy. Cammy. Cammy the Camaro. Cammy the Camaro. Mm-hmm. There we go. Everyone does, dude. That's why I was like, he's got you. Though. <laughs> so you were with Cammy for a while. We were huh? with Cammy for a while, <laughs> but she 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 did me good. Yeah, but and then you then you do you sell her and get the. FJ? I still have her. Oh, you still have her. She That's just, the she's a stay at home. Stay at home now. when uh yep. when, when it's the right time. She just stays home and looks good there in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And so, uh, so you were in Nashville for a while. You said? I did went back and forth for a bit with my um my old band. Uh-huh. Uh Me and me and my ex, we uh-huh. had a band, a country music. We did uh, we did the whole Nashville thing. Went out yeah. there for a bit. Wrote right. a record. Uh, had it produced out there, and so what is like that Nashville music scene like? It's it's pretty cool. It's there's a lot going on in Nashville for a lot of different variations of mm-hmm. the Americana folk country genre. Mm-hmm. If you want to go for like the radio country, there's avenues for that. Mm-hmm. If you want to do more of the Americana folk side, there's avenues for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's mostly. But it seems like. Everyone goes there. With, it's almost like a Hollywood for like that for act. You know, actors go to Hollywood. It's, like yeah. it's like that for that genre of the people, industry's become a lot like Los Angeles's industry. Yeah, yeah. That's why. I mean, that's we. I mean, I fi- I'm sure it's freaking cool, but there must just be more competition. Oh yeah, it's, it's great to visit there, but as a musician, it's it's hard. It's like man. doggy dog kind of. Oh, it's tough. But the ma- biggest difference that, from my experience with Nashville than L. A. Mm-hmm. Nashville, the everyone else is much more supportive of you. They want to collaborate more. Mm. LA is more cutthroat. Yeah, and it's like, all in it for If you're themselves. getting an opportunity, you're taking that opportunity away from me. Versus exactly, like, yeah. Versus yeah. In like, LA, they don't want to help you out. You're on your own. In Nashville, everyone's lifting each other up. Yeah, which is, yeah. Which is different. I mean, there's pros and cons to that. Yeah. Both. I mean, you over there, people are, are want to help you out, but also they kind of in it for something. Yeah, too. or they want to like, hey, I did this for you. Maybe you could do blah blah exactly or something like yeah. that. And like, I mean, obviously, like I I mm-hmm. I get that, but it, yeah, it just seems to me that like, like so like, but what about finding gigs out there? I mean, there's just unlimited gigs. You can or play. Is there, or you can play, just... but you're you're not gonna make a living doing it. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, everything you make is gonna be out of a pickle jar, tip jar. Yeah. So. Oh, so it's more like, hey, we'll give you the spot, but we're not going to pay you? Exactly. Because if Cause you, it's like somebody else will play for here for free, exactly. huh? Exactly. If you don't play, they've got a line of people waiting. So. Dang. And, what, I mean, were tips at least a little better there? You know, I only played on Broadway one time, or like one day, or oh. two days, two, three oh. days. We went out there. We weren't out there to perform. We were just out there to write and record. Oh, and record stuff. Yeah, so gotcha. we just did a bunch of writing, some recording, just um, a lot of the, what do you call it, uh, had to edit this out. I mean, <laughs> the, a lot of a lot of the behind the scenes work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it was a cool experience, but I didn't actually play on Broadway until the band split, mm-hmm. and then I went back there on a road trip. I just uh, left everything at home. Didn't even bring my guitar with me. I really? Just, I've been working. I'm, I'm a contractor. Okay, gotcha. So for the power company. So um, I don't know if I can say their name on here. No. I, we've- if you, I can believe it if yeah. you say it. <laughs> but uh, so we were working up in Paradise uh-huh. after the fire up there. Oh, okay. And I was up there for okay. three months. <laughs> that company? <laughs> yeah. <okay>. So. <laughs> Sorry. 
I was like, I was like, I was like, I'm not gonna know what company it is. I'm like, okay, I know you what know company what it is. is. Yeah. So uh, I was up there for three months and yeah. just helping to clean up really? patrolling lines and all that. Do you oh. just like st- what do you guys stay when you're up there? Hotels. Hotels? Yeah. Well, for a while they had base camp. I don't know if I can talk about any of this, but but I was staying up hotels. Let me know. We we're, were working up on the fire and uh it was just so depressing, man. It's like a I can't, I mean, yeah. like a bomb went off. It was it was like surreal. Hard. And I'd yeah. just gone through the hardest time of my life I, me and my mm-hmm. ex had split and then i just immediately get sent was up. This, was this 2020 or this 2019? was 2018 18, 18, 2018 18. yeah my old band cottonwood creek we just split it was me and we were we were married so. yeah yeah it was you too yeah it was okay. us too we split then my work sent me straight up to paradise right after that really so we had a time to hey we're gonna isolate yeah, you in I a hotel room rough, man but let's go send you up to a disaster <laughs> yeah. area so that Look, it could be worse scott exactly I'm just kidding. <laughs> but i like i didn't even touch my guitar aside from really like, just making, take a little break kinda. oh yeah i just wasn't in the mood to play i mean I, yeah like, i mean i understand that i didn't too. want to sing it's, yeah so got done with work up there three months had gone by i was just a lowest of low that i've been a long time so Did i you just, have tammy or was cammy yet cammy i just got cammy cammy you still had cammy i okay. just got her then oh okay, okay so okay. i just I, I got her some new wheels got them powder coated black <laughs> and so i just got back from from paradise went home unloaded all my stuff washed a bunch of clothes threw them in a bag hit the car yeah, hit the road. Hit the just, car. I, you know, <laughs> Cammy. <laughs> start up. It's a push start. No. There we go. So I packed up all my stuff. Hit the road. Hit the road. Left my guitar at home. Didn't want to touch it. Didn't want to think about I, it. Ended up in Nashville. I ended up in Nashville. I ended, uh, did, what, did you like take a road trip, go different places and stuff? Kind or? of. I, I took the cats that she left, dropped them off with her in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Shoved, I'll tell you. Traveling from California to Texas with Cat. two cats in a car is the worst thing. I can't even imagine. Like, cats are also, like, cats are so confident. Like, I feel like cats mm-hmm. are always so confident. And then you put you put them in a situation they've never been in, and they look like the most awkward, like, don't know, like, what yeah. they're doing. Like and They'll meow the entire yeah. time, just constantly. <laughs> every... Maybe I'll put these cats in the trunk. <laughs> They're not about it. I don't know. I don't know what happened to the cats. They're great got cats, them. but I know. I know what you mean. I'm a, I mean, I, I love cats, but mm. dogs are so much fucking better. I'm oh, yeah. sorry. Like they and just I, are. I, I wish I could have kept them, but it's just my work at the time. I was just driving. You weren't. You weren't. I was there. gone all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. I was gone like every other week. Mm-hmm. So dropped the cats off. Ended up going to Tulsa to visit some family. Then a friend hit me up. She was like, "Hey, you sh- you you coming out to Nashville? I see you're in Oklahoma." Okay, they, okay, she I'm saw like, you were going. I'm like. I didn't plan on it, but I'm like, all right, all right. So I ended up leaving um, Oklahoma after like a week or something. W- ended up in Nashville. It was like negative 18 when I rolled into town. It was freezing cold, mm-hmm. middle of the night, got a hotel, and then met up with my friend Allie. She's mm-hmm. uh, just someone I met through just playing the circuits around here oh, in around California. Here? Yeah, okay, she's gotcha. from the Bay Area originally. And and she, but she, she's the person who hit you up? Or yeah, no? she's, she's out in Nashville now. Oh, okay. She's, Great vocalist, just really, really cool person. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we did a little writing session um, at down on Music Row. We mm-hmm. didn't really get too much done. We just ended up recording a, a cover of a song mm-hmm. and just post it on YouTube. And uh, but we just hung out. It was just nice to hang out with another musician. Um, it had been months since I even played her or anything. So. And then she uh, she said, "Hey, I should get you some gigs on Broadway." So we're like, okay. So she called up. A couple places got me in the on the books for a place called Rippies mm-hmm. and another place. Uh, and so it wasn't the, it wasn't until the, your second time around that you actually played, right? Yeah, You're right. Yeah, That's, that that was the first time I played, and I, I'd been in Nashville several times before that. Uh huh. But the first time I played guitar, performed since everything went down mm-hmm. after taking a hiatus, was on Broadway in Nashville. So, oh really? So that was kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. Like you're like, and you're like, you had no plans. Like, yeah. And that's what I like. I like those things, like the serendipitous moments of your life, where you're just like, if if I would have took the wrong turn today, like oh, none yeah. of this would be happening. You know, yeah. you just like run into somebody or something like that. Like, and that that's it's so so cool that you're just like, I guess I'll, yeah, okay, okay, I'll, I'll come to Nashville, I'll hang out with you, and then like all of a sudden you're playing. Exactly. Yeah. It, yeah. It was very poetic. It's like a rebirth. And that would yeah, I would say was that you kind of you like. For the first time coming back to music after all that, mm-hmm. that's cool. And so, let's say then you head back home to California, start booking shows, start booking booking shows. Yep. How soon after did because you were you like I got to change my name 
at that point? It was, I think I started thinking about changing it, um, like, right before I went to Nashville. Because I, I didn't want to stop music entirely. I kind of wanted to stop. But then I was like, you know what? I'll still write. Just do stuff for yourself, basically, yeah. kind of, yeah. So I had already tossed around the idea of just going to Scott Patrick versus Scott Little or mm-hmm. Scott Patrick Little. It's like so. a very, I don't yeah, it's like, is it, I don't know if it's Irish or if it's uh, exactly. Scottish. <laughs> yeah. It's confusing you. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day and I'm a Scott. So. Yeah. And then I see you in a kilt and then I was like, I was like, and then somebody was like, or my wife was like, she's like, or he's he's Irish, right? Or, or I was like, or is it Scottish? Like with the kilt. I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> Ambiguous. And like my questions, but uh, like, are you like, do you know anything about like your family's history in that? We've got family um, Scotland and Irish roots. So um, I've got a kilt. That represents the the littles. Um, the li- lineage of the littles goes to the Farquharson clan, mm-hmm. or well, the that's that the <laughs> go on, go on, go on. <laughs> one of the clans affiliated with my family is the the Farquharson clan, uh-huh. and then another one is the Graham clan. So I know two of the main clans that my family's from. And those are sorry, those is that that's Scottish side, or Scottish side, Scottish yeah. side is the clan. Yeah, I don't right. know too much about my Irish side. Uh-huh. They were early settlers. In the U.S., no, probably came over but the Scots, ago. the Scottish, they're they're much more new. Uh-huh. So I've I've spoke to my uh, my mother about my grandmother's side mm-hmm. and the Farquharson clan. It's just all the different clans of Scotland, little different groups of people that yeah. live there. And so I've got a kilt with the official tartan. The the, uh, of your family? Of my family. That's pretty cool. So and the, is that just like the logo, basically? Pretty much, yeah. What, what, so what, is tartan? Is that what you tartan. said? Tartan. Tartan. Tartan, okay. tartan, whatever, whatever you want to say it. But yeah, it's the plaid. Okay. The, you got, well, the plaid. Oh, so each family has like a... Has kinda, their own specific one. Really? It could be variation in color. They're <laughs> all... So wild. I would all plaid, <laughs> plaid shaped, but there's different colors involved. Different like, schemes. Different exactly. Designs. Different thicknesses of the bars. Different... Really? Accents. How do you? How does one go by getting an authentic? You have kilt? to know the. You got to know somebody. The family history. <laughs> oh, well, you, really? can, you can get your kilts. There are some universal kilt tartans uh-huh. that aren't affiliated with family. Like I wouldn't recommend getting a family tartan that isn't yours. Some people just, get offended. Yeah, of that. I was gonna say I'm so. sure somebody who was like really into it, and I'm th- sure that person's like, I don't know, man. I just bought yeah. this. <laughs> like, you can get. Uh, I think they have different um, tartans for different states. There's different countries that have mm-hmm. them. Um, my girlfriend's Portuguese, so I try to look up. There's one for Portugal. Oh, dude, there's, I'm there's Portuguese. Not, that's why I brought it up. Yeah, but they, I don't think they have one for Portugal. I don't. They, I don't get kilts. This they, are there kilts for other countries and stuff. Oh huh? yeah. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, you, you, it doesn't matter what color you are. Man. I just assumed like, it was like a uh, maybe Irish Scottish thing. <laughs> well, it, it's where it originated, but yeah, I mean, yeah. there's there's people from all walks of life that wear kilts. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that compete in like the Scottish games. Uh-huh. They do like the different countries. The caber and toss. Yeah. And there's different. It's like it's almost like a strongman competition. Pretty much, but like more similar. of like a track and field kind of thing. Yeah, like more like a yeah. But yeah, back but in. but there's people from all backgrounds that compete. And oh really? They all have they all wear kilts. I went everything. to. I mean, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I went to Oktoberfest, and I mean, a lot. That's German, but uh, mm. they all wear kilts and stuff during Oktoberfest. Oh yeah, a lot of people do. You know it's what a mean? good occasion. I mean, there's yeah. nothing better than drinking in a kilt, man. Yeah, it's yeah. So liberating. I went to uh, Mammoth. I love Mammoth. Oh, uh, I love Mammoth, Mammoth too, dude. It's it's fucking best. Oh, I, yeah. Like it's, I don't know what it is about Mammoth, but I just like. I love like all the, all the hot springs, the hiking, the. Since the community there. It's beautiful. Beer's good, too. The be- yeah, the beer's Mammoth good. Mammoth Brewing. I've played at Mammoth Brewing. I've played at Blacked Out Brewing. Oh, that's sick. I've played down the road in... in uh, um, Bishop or where? Bishop a couple yeah. times at Rusty's, and uh, there's another um, brewery out in Have you been Bishop. farther down, uh, like Lone Pine, like Alabama Hills area? I've been through there, but uh-huh. I, haven't, I haven't really stopped. Oh, no. I, I just went, I went like not too uh, long ago for the first time, and we just stumbled upon it because mm-hmm. me and my wife got engaged in Joshua Tree, oh, cool. and then we, we kept on joking like, Oh, let's go to like maybe we'll just extend it and we'll go to Mammoth. And we kept joking, kept joking, and then uh, we're like one night we're like fuck it, let's go. And so uh, we did. And then we there we stayed in like I forget what town. It was a town before Lone Pine, and they, it, we ended up staying in a teepee. It was like a teepee, but it was like a yurt basically. Uh-huh. But uh, it had two beds in it and like had all cool, this stuff. Man. Yeah, so it was it was interesting. And then we heard this cat meowing like outside, and we're like. What I don't know, really know what's going on. Like, and then like then my my wife she starts like meowing back to the cat, and out of nowhere like a cat just goes pop 
pops like through the teepee and it's, and we're eating and then it just keeps meowing and like I'm like giving it food and it's just eating <laughs> like like and normally like it's it's like a campground cat for sure. Oh like, yeah, it knows what it's doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not his first rodeo and like <laughs> so like I'm just like giving it like random things that we're eating and then I like I'm eating we're eating chicken wings and like I give him a chicken wing and without thinking about it I was like give oh, him a chicken no. wing and then like not even like ten seconds later I like turn back and I'm like where'd the chicken wing go and I was like did you move the chicken wing and she's like I didn't move the chicken wing and I was like you didn't move the chicken wing and I was like and the cat was just sitting there like just swallowed it whole and then I was just like oh my gosh the cat ate the chicken wing and that cat like literally wouldn't leave us the whole night like it was like a little, it was a little dirty. Like, so like, and it, it was like trying to come up on our bed and cuddle with us. I was like, hey, cat, oh, like, man. I'm not gonna have you. But like, so we, we went to sleep, we went to sleep that night. Me and it was like uh, a queen bed on this side and a queen bed on that side. It was like me and my wife were on the queen bed on this side and the cat, the cat. was by itself on the queen bed <laughs> on that side. And then, uh, but then I looked it up and it was just said, it's that it's more common than you think, like, like animals eating bones or it was, oh, it yeah. just said that, uh, it's like, think about like how owls eat like whole things. I mean, oh, yeah. they throw them back up, but, uh, yeah, it's coming out the other end for the cat. I, I've seen owl pellets, but I've never seen cat pellets. You, you see hairballs, <laughs> yeah. but they don't have bones in them yeah. usually. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Oh, so do you play harmonica too, right? I do. I play harmonica. I play. You I play, play. Okay, you have a lot of harmonicas, right? I, I do. If I, I'm not mistaken, I remember. So when I took, so me and Scott originally met because I did some photos for him mm -hmm. uh, at the mains or while he's playing. Also, that, those photos came out like I mean they were really good. I oh, really, they're fantastic! I, I, I was really so happy much. with. And, like, you made me look good. Hey, I, 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 no, dude, you made. No, it was just a good subject, but the. My favorite photo is the one from behind. It has like the two lights that are like shining. Like I, I love that. Yeah, one yeah. So I'm like, much. wow, this looks just it, just like the way that it came out. Just looks so good. Oh yeah. So that's how we linked up. What was, what was I gonna ask? Did I ask you a question? I was about to ask you. Harmonicas. A oh, harmonicas. Yeah. So I remember when you were setting up, you like opened a case, and I was like, that got guy, briefcase. That guy has like, yeah. I was like, I don't know how many. Like that guy has like ten harmonicas. So oh, yeah. what are the differences of harmonicas? All different keys. Keys. Different um different songs, different keys. So you need a harmonica to go to that song. And then if it depends on what if you're playing in like a major key, um, or a minor key, or if you use playing in like a blues. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing like more of a blues rock song, you don't use the harmonica. The song is in. You have to transpose to the minor relative mm -hmm. of it, and it can be really annoying. So you have to have something for anything. So if 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 you need to change the key of a song, if you're playing with someone else, you got to make sure you have. The harmonica that'll work for you. Yeah. So it's good to have an arsenal of them. Yeah. And they're yeah. all different kind of sounds too, different tones. And is there materials. like you know, like an old harmonica that like sound like you know what I mean? I assume that like an older harmonica might have like a vintage type sound or feel to it. There's there's older style harmonicas. Uh -huh. I haven't held on to harmonicas too long because I use them until they go out. I so mean, what what happens? You just I mean, do people just and like your spit end up like killing them? Or I'm out of curiosity. This, this, like the spit does destroy them over time. You, you can clean them. To an extent, but if you're really rough on them and play them a lot, eventually the the metal reeds they get like kind of plugged up or what? They get gummed up with all kinds of stuff. You can take them apart and clean them, um, but the reeds sometimes they just get warped and bent and oh really? And they just jam up. And sometimes it's easier just to just throw it out and get a new one. The ones I get are like 40, 50 bucks though, so oh. I, I use them as long as I can. Yeah, yeah. I clean them as much as I can, but after a certain point, it's like, okay, this has got to retire. Yeah, that, and that's not too bad. I mean, at least for a musical yeah. instrument, let's say. It's like I don't break a you string have, on my You guitar, ever just throw my play harmonica? Away. Like you ever just like? Not so much, no. And so when did you pick up harmonica? I started that in college. In college, yeah, I wanted accompaniment with, for when I was playing guitar, but just something to kind of go with it, basically. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Just, I saw someone do it once, and I was like, you know what, that's kind of cool. What are the, what are those hold? Are they just called harmonica holders? The things that people wear? Yeah, neck holder, neck harmonica holder, holder. Yeah, and it just goes yeah. there, and then because mm -hmm. you're like singing. Then playing harmonica, then going back. Do you like lose your breath a lot out there? I mean, oh, or it's, it's exhausting. The, was it a process to get used to it? It was. Yeah. It was a long process. I. I. Uh, yeah, it just takes a while to get used to the breathing and figuring out on each song where you can breathe. Mm -hmm. So it's you take a breath when you can, and you take a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So. That's what I was wondering because that's what it seems like. It's like Tay Zonday. You have to turn away when you're taking a breath. Oh, okay, so yeah, so it doesn't go <gasps> like in the microphone. Chocolate rain. Yeah. A chalk. I forgot about that. It's like chocolate rain. I have a good deep, vo deep yeah, voice. Yeah, I can't do for that. that. <laughs> chocolate it's okay, rain. Man, yeah. you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want my singing voice. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so, what's the first CD you remember owning? Like, like, because we grew up in the days of like, you know, you're having to maybe, maybe you had a tape. I don't know. But, well, my my first tape. 
Who was your? Um, it was cassette tape, right? It was cassette so, cause tape. People, for the older listeners, it wasn't no eight tracks. Mm. Okay, you guys. <laughs> I think my first one. Um, I I think I. My brother got Weezer's Blue album on cassette. Oh, really? And I kind of adopted it. Mm-hmm. And he would tell them that I stole it. Yeah. And kept, <laughs> we had to steal it back from each other. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that was the first tape that I really that I really listened to. Mm-hmm. And he 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 was always the one buying the music, and I was just kind of borrowing it from him, listening to it. Is that my phone? No, I'm on I'm on silent. I don't know. I'm on airplane too. That are weird sounds. Oh, there we go. Give me the upstairs. No, <laughs> probably. So we were. I would always borrow his music. He had. Um, I think it was Weezer. Is your had, older brother? He, older brother. Yeah, okay. he's three years older than me. So this was '94. So he, he was. Yeah, a couple years older. Yeah. Than me. Um, Weezer. Weezer. Oasis, okay. Toad the Wet Sprocket. I don't even know if I heard that. That's all right. Um, and a couple other ones. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember what they were. And then my first CD. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, bought. but like the so CDs, like almost like okay, new era, not new era. But that, that's like, like the 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 what my generation identified with, with CDs. Yeah, yeah, that no, was I, do. I, I going and buy CDs. Man. Oh yeah, just CD players. People mm-hmm. walking around with CD players. Walkman. Like, I'm gonna know this whole album by like, the end of the day. <laughs> oh yeah, and you better have the anti skip on, or yeah, else yeah. I'm gonna get real pissed off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, they did invent anti skip too. So that and was what was the anti skip? Is for your Walkman. Sometimes if you didn't have it on, if you bump it, your CD would oh, skip. Oh yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do remember that. God, I'm feeling old now. No, no, I haven't no. Talked yeah, about I, that in years. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. But my first. It, you go start going. Sorry. I was going to get off topic. <laughs> no, but the first CD I ever bought. Bare Naked Ladies. Bare Naked Ladies, really? It's been one week. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Oh, that was the first record I ever bought because of that song. And, yeah, I mean, I still listen to it every once in a while. I mean, it's not my favorite album at all mm-hmm. these days. But, but I mean, when I listen to it, it's still, like we were saying earlier, it's just nostalgia, man. Yeah, no, it really is. It's like just what... And it's funny because when you re-listen to them, and it, so my first CD, which is really random of a CD to have, it was the Scorpions. Like it's oh, obviously, man. it was like a, it was like the Rocky Like a Hurricane album, and that was like, but that, that was like I had it in the two thousands. That's you know a lot I mean? cooler for uh, a CD. Yeah, I mean it is. There was also like. <laughs> dude, my 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 dad. It was my dad's like old one. He was like, you can listen to it. And then like, I think I was like, I was pretty young. But my mom was like, hey, like, it's a little too too hardcore for you or something <laughs> like that. And then you listen to it now, you're like, rock you like a hurricane. Like it's not even like no like, compared to music <laughs> these days. Yeah, exactly. Some like, please, Cardi, please take see, it. Some Cardi B or something like that. I had a lot of Christian uh, rap albums. I growing feel sorry up. for parents <laughs> these days trying to. Yeah. Dude, you can't. You, you can't. Especially, they have a whole computer and can look up anything. Yeah, they, want, they have access to times. everything. There's, yeah, there's, there's. I'm so, but I'm so glad we grew up, or like at least like we grew up when we when we did, because like, like I'm glad that like when I was in high school, the the, the first iPhone came out, but it, yeah, it wasn't. No one had Instagram. No one has it, the social media was. MySpace transitioning to Facebook, basically. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, a good time to be alive. Or like, you know what I mean? It was, like, a different time. When I was graduating high school, we didn't have anything really like that. No, because MySpace didn't come down until, like, later. A couple, no, few years yeah. later. YouTube had just come out when we were in high school. YouTube and, was a shit when college it college was when I got MySpace. That was my really? first year of college. I got MySpace. and MySpace was cool because it, like, it was kind of like, hey, it's like we're a social media site, but... Also, you still have to like kind of code to make your stuff. Like, yeah, you remember you, you had to copy and paste I the links the, and stuff I, like I, that. I did all that stuff. Yeah, man. you're like, okay, my text quote small, the whatever, font, yeah, colors, yeah, and yeah, it, it, I miss that, man. And almost like it's like helped because I feel like that was like an introduction to, to like the coding world. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? And it's it's crazy to think about because like I, I never took a coding class or anything, but I, I I'm like also like a I'm a high school substitute teacher, mm-hmm. but I also I, I have, well, a couple of times I taught little kids. Not for me. It was, dude, my first time subbing. It was... Uh, oh, man. Dude, it was a fourth grade class, and, like, I'm, like, coming out of, like, going to college probably for way too long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like, I think I was, like... It, it was, like... I don't know. I think I was, like, 25, 26, and, like, I was just not prepared for that. It was just, like... Oh, yeah. It was just, like, stuff's going on everywhere. I don't know how to control these kids. They're brutal, man. Someone's crying. They have, like, teachers has, like, these things where, like, you move your stickers up, it's good. Move your stickers down, it's bad. And I was, like, moving all the bad kids' stickers down. Then, like, they're, like, on the ground crying hysterically. 
another little kid calls another kid, little kid a bad word. Like all this is going on. Like and like I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, maybe I'll never substitute again. <laughs> then, uh, like, this is ruining. Yeah, me. this is like pretty bad. And then and then I did high school. And then I started doing junior high. And I was like, oh, okay, that's a little bit better. Like mm-hmm. at least the kids like. Kind of understand what's going on. Yeah, now, high school's where it's at, man. I oh, mean, if yeah. you're a high school substitute teacher, it's like they have their own personalities. Finally, yeah, and they, everything's and everything's on on Google Classroom now. Like it's oh. so, it's so crazy. It's like it's like you walk in and it's like, hi, my name is Mr. Daly. I'll be your guys a substitute today. Your son's Google Classroom. Do by the end of the period. That's it. That's pretty rad, and man. Then, yeah, and so I just like I edit all my photos, do my video stuff, and I've actually started getting so busy where I can't even do that anymore, mm-hmm. which is which is a good thing. I have to remind oh, yeah, myself. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, man, I actually miss like substituting now. Oh like, no, yeah. yeah, it's rewarding, man. It is. Yeah, yeah. My my parents are both teachers. Yeah. growing up, so I'm in I, Mariposa. Uh, or, yeah, my dad was in Chowchilla. My oh, mom was in Mariposa. Okay, gotcha. They commuted. What is uh, is there? So uh, there's Mariposa High School, or only one high school in Mariposa? Yeah, yeah, I, I figured that. But uh, where's it? Where's it located at? The high school? Yeah. Uh, it's just going through. It go up down up 140 to Mariposa. Uh-huh. You know where Mariposa yes, is? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Yeah, I, got, I, got, I know. I know where it is. I'm okay. trying to think of where you, at in the town you, it is. You go down 140, come down into town, and uh, keep going about halfway through. Mariposa, uh-huh. you turn right, and then high school down that way a little bit. Really? Yep. It just like hit it. I mean, not on the main street, right? Just no, a it's bit just out. a couple streets over, but uh, it, it's just right in the middle of Mariposa, what, just all the was, way on the east side. Uh, what was the size of Mariposa's graduating class? My graduating class was about two hundred. Oh, that's still like at least you have like uh, that's like a community of people, like you know yeah. what I mean. That's like a, a good for amount. how big the county no, is. No, yeah, uh, exactly. Tiny. That's that's what I was thinking. That's so why I was like, okay, like because there's some high schools where it's like we have ninety people graduating this year oh, or wow. something. Like but that. then you also have how many high schools in the area? Dude, there's so many high schools. In oh yeah, the area. we have one high <laughs> yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. The county is is massive. That yeah, that is true. Yeah, and like so, I'm sure some kids like were like commuting like 30, 40 minutes to school. Oh yeah, right. Because yeah, you, it's the mountain, so it's like your county is. <laughs> yeah, if you're like in in Kathy's Valley, which is like oh, yeah, almost no, exactly. to, yeah, yeah, you have to go all the way over the mountain to town, or if you're in like yeah, you go up the mountain still pretty like much the Ponderosa Basin or Boot Jack or Mid Pines, mm-hmm. El Portal. Is, yeah, El Portal is a long way, and they still, still a lot of them still go to high school. What in other, like what's the other close? Quote close high school to you guys. Um, it would be Oakhurst or yeah, something. Yeah, Yosemite High School in Oakhurst. Okay, that's gotcha. the next closest one. Other than that, it'd be uh, Merced. Oh, so. really? Yep. Was are you was your rivalry like of sports in high, in high school Oakhurst? Legrand. Legrand. It was Legrand. That, uh, the people down the mountain. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, it was Legrand versus Mariposa. It, it got it got wild. Some some games like some some fights broke out sometimes. Really. Um, defacing each other's mascots <laughs> at the high school. Dude, I, it was some bad there stuff. There used to I don't know. There used to be this MTV show that was all about that. It was like crazy high school stories, pretty much of uh-huh. like kids that like did stuff and. Uh, but that, that that's just what that reminds me of because I feel like back in the day it, it was like that it was oh, almost yeah. like uh, and that was almost not encouraged but like that was a com- camaraderie com- camaraderie of your school was like your school support and like oh, doing yeah. things like that I mean th- someone's got to be the villain yeah there's yeah, always exactly. got to have to be a villain and you got to be it, it feels good to be the hero so yeah yeah they it, just it, and you're also the hero and the villain at the same time you exactly know what I, mean? Like, <laughs> it, I mean it's all it's the devil's advocate yeah so. yeah that's cool and so who who inspires you. Uh, like musician wise, like Ooh. I'm sure you. I'm sure there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch. <clears throat> there's a whole bunch. <laughs> but... We can go through different uh, genres for you. <laughs> well, growing up, of course, it was Weezer and all yeah. the rock people, um, Foo Fighters, all that. But when I started playing acoustic guitar, I think it was like 2010, um, 2009, 2010. I really started focusing on more acoustic, and uh, I think it was about 2012. I started writing my own songs again. After I listened to uh, Gregory Allen Isakov okay. or Isakov, I've heard it both ways. I'm not sure which way it is. <laughs> yeah, um, but he's my absolute favorite. You think I know his name better? <laughs> but um, he's he's he, that's he, like Bon Iver or Bon Iver. Bon Iver, like, yeah, bon like, Iver. I, yeah, it's like I don't know, man. The, the, I don't know I, what, I just, what it is. <laughs> you play amazing music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but but Gregory, he he inspired me to start writing again because I took years off. Mm-hmm. Just I I partied a lot throughout the. From like after college to about 2010, 2011, mm-hmm. I, I was, 
I was not on a good path. I was just having too much fun. I was I mean, I think sleeping a lot of in a van behind a bar. Oh, really, man. Oh, yeah. I was, at, I was performing you, on the you, streets. Were you, were you playing? You were just performing on... I mean, so you were just... I was a street be, musician. Be, being a musician. I was busking. Like, being a musician, doing what musicians do. Oh, basically, yeah. Kinda. Right. I was playing in front of the movie theater in here Merced. I was playing Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Oh, really? Just Venice drive Beach. places and, oh, yeah. and play? Uh, so do you ever like, uh, like, so San Francisco, and there's a lot of street performers in like all these places. Oh, yeah. So places like San Francisco or LA where there's more street performers, like are tips pretty good in like those oh, areas? They can be, yeah. Like just randomly? And I made I, a living. I'm, I, well, real, I mean, living as in I, as in, you live in your I, van. Put, <laughs> I put gas in the van and I could Got afford food, food and, and yeah. I was... And whatever I was drinking that night, or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, smoking yeah, exactly. or something. That's so, cool, though. It was, it was, it's a romantic lifestyle in the sense that it sounds desirable and freeing, but in reality, it kind of sucks. No, yeah, it's like it's like the whole van life thing in general. It is, but yeah, it was, no, but but I mean, what I mean by that is like I think van life sounds really cool. Sounds really good. Until you do it. And then we, so we did like, we made a whole, we have a bed and a Jeep and everything. Oh, that's cool. Down well, you had a bed though. I didn't. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I slept on a pile of clothes. It, it, was, it, it wasn't the glamorous stuff you yeah, see on but, Instagram. Yeah, but like, it was like on day like four of sleeping in that Jeep, I'm like, maybe we should just get a tent. Like, mm-hmm. hey, like maybe that's easier because like, it's just like, I, I can, I can, I can imagine that van's cool for a month or two but i can see that reach 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 <laughs> but i i can i can see how like two months three months four months down the line you're like oh i'm kind of like tight because you you feel like you're always on the move you're always on vacation you're never having that true rest of sleep that like yeah your body's probably but also running. waking up with the lack of responsibilities oh no no don't get me wrong i'm sure <laughs> no i know exactly why people are drawn to it oh, yeah. like yeah yeah but the, the for me though i mean it was it was a choice i had kind of had a little, um, got into my parents a little bit. I was in a really rebellious spot, yeah. And I just kind of just made a choice just to up and go, up and go. I, I'd moved back into my parents after college, and I was just like, I felt bad because I was living there and we weren't getting along because I was just being a little punk. Yeah, and, I mean, that, we all go through that phase. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're they're my favorite people in the world. Yeah, yeah. So, so, it takes I mean, you until it's funny because it takes you until like you be, start like becoming more of like an, an actual adult. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Like you're I, adult I, at eighteen, but let's be real. Like I quote my parents all the time, my mom and my dad. Uh-huh. Like I, I always find myself catching saying things that they say. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it, it's funny. It's so like true. yeah, it's so funny, and then it's funny how things like just end up being, and then like. Now it's like, oh, like I want to hang out with my parents. Like, hey, can I? Can, oh, yeah. can, I, can we hang out? Like, we're out of town, actually. I'm like, okay, you kids. <laughs> hey, you, you just, I see him. I see him a couple times a month. So we try to. Sometimes we try to do they once in a week, every other week. Yeah, they're they're not too far from me, so I, I go over for family dinners, dinners all the time. Stuff, yeah. yeah, usually on Sundays or something. Yeah, something like that. But uh, that's van cool. van, mm, mm, van life. <laughs> Yeah. Van life. I'm still going through puberty. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I got this peach fuzz going I don't, on. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think you can go through any more puberty. <laughs> but so, where was I going with that? Uh, so I was living in a van. Man. Life was rough. Then I discovered Gregory Allen, Isakov's music, and it really showed me what it was like to be like a true songwriter in a sense. This song really just spoke to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, hell, I've got this is all his lyrics tattooed oh, to my really? arm right here. So he, I listened to his music. It changed my my life and my music yeah. life. Started writing songs again, and then I, that's when I started my last band. It was not too long after that. Really, and it just really changed my life as a musician. Yeah, and, and as a person. As no, it, it's all. It's part. It's like I think like with like artistic people. It's like all part of your craft of who you are. And it's funny because like all my life, I wouldn't necessarily consider myself like an artistic person. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I didn't get doing into a camera and film and stuff like that. Like I was into it in high school and I wanted to do it. Got detoured for one reason or another. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, Three years ago is when I like picked everything back up, and I was there like, okay, like I want to, and that's so why I did the thing that everybody does, like okay, go to go to college, you're supposed to go to college, like I was like I don't know, major in history, oh, yeah. anthropology, business, education, freaking uh, like sustainability, like literally <laughs> everything. Get, finally get my degree in educational studies because I'm gonna be, become a teacher, mm-hmm. and then I started thinking like, wait, what do I want to, wait, what do I want to do actually? Because exactly. like, I've done that. What I think I'm supposed to do with my whole entire life. <laughs> now you have this knowledge. You're like, but but I want to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like when I graduated, I wanted to take a road trip. I wanted to just kind of go mm-hmm. figure it out. And like I didn't figure out anything. I mean, I brought a camera with me and I recorded like all these little things. And it wasn't, I didn't even know then at the end of it or uh, a year later. Like that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're good. It's freaking everywhere. But then, then, then it's like. 
it's like a growing process. Like, like you're saying, like you kind of like go through all these different phases in your life and like, like I'm sure it's interesting for you because music's always been there for you. Mm -hmm. Like almost, it's like almost like a dog in the sense that like, you know oh, yeah. what I mean? Like it's always been there Your for dog you. dog just won't die. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, dang it. And I was kidding. But uh, yeah, like all these different like moments in your life, like, and then music's been there. And like, so for me, it was like, kind of cool because like I, did, I just stumbled upon doing a podcast, man. Mm -hmm. It was like, I want to do a podcast. Well, like, you, you evolved with the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think podcasting discovered you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it, yeah. And it was like one of those things where I was like, I always thought I could have a podcast for the life of me. It was going to be trail talks and whatnot. It was going to be just about hiking and outdoors. Mm -hmm. And then like uh, my buddy on the first episode, he's like, I mean, do you like like hiking that much? Like, do you want to only talk about like hiking and trails? Like, <laughs> and I was like, and it was like the first episode. And I was like, honestly, no. And then like he was like, what about like real talk and whatnot? Because it was trail talks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. He's like, what about real talk and whatnot? And I was like, hey, I like that. It it, it doesn't shove you into a category. Yeah. Like it, one, it doesn't put you in a specific in a box. Niche. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And so that it rolled with real talk. And then it wasn't until like six episodes in, I was like, okay, I need to sit down and figure out what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. what is this podcast? Like, what is it going to be about? Uh, and so then that's why I was like, okay, like, came up with a little statement, like, people in the Central Valley, talented individuals. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. And then people in general who are passionate about what they do. So I'll, Well, thank you for including me as one of the talented people. <laughs> of course, man. Of course, I appreciate you coming on. And, and like, so... You start, so you, you come back from Tennessee. I'm just jumping all over the uh, place. Right. But you, jump, you come back from Tennessee that second time, and you're trying to feel recharged, right? After. Oh, yeah. I, I had a renewal. Uh, I felt reborn as a musician. Yeah. Like, I hadn't touched my guitar for months. Didn't even want to play, really. Mm -hmm. Came back. And what year was that? That was 2019. 19. Okay. It was uh, February 2019. And you start... You come back, you start booking gigs. Come back, start. It started slowly at first. Well, yeah, and that's the thing, like with photography, videography, any type of art, it's like you gotta mm. like kind of put in your time of like. Oh yeah. Let me be familiar with this. Let me do stuff for cheaper than I want to. Let me play for free. Let me do something. Let me get some stuff on my portfolio. Like, exactly, because yeah. because for years, for the last um, eight years, I was performing in a duo, and I sang about half the songs, and so when I. Start playing again. I was like, oh, wait, I don't know very many songs. I don't have too many songs that I really want to play anymore. Mm -hmm. So I had to write some new songs. I had to learn a bunch of new songs. Mm -hmm. And so I could play more than like an hour show. So eventually, so I got up a two hour set, started booking some places I used to play. You with remember the old all band. these lyrics like off the top of your head? I could sing, I could probably sing start to finish almost four hours straight of songs and not repeat one. Really? There's a bunch of songs that don't play live, but if we're just going for anything, yeah, no, I know. But no, yeah, anything I could you know. probably play four to five hours straight. Dang. And, just yeah. all those lyrics in your brain. A lot of words up here. Yeah, man, that's wild. That's why sometimes I stumble when I speak, because I got a lot going up here, Dude, that's but like, I go faster that's than my like mouth. That's like me in this podcast. Oh, I yeah. Had, uh, I feel like Elon Musk. Have you ever seen one of his interviews? Yeah, yeah. His brain's moving faster than his mouth, and Dude, that's how I feel sometimes. Dude, yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, so I'm doing some work for uh, El Capitan, mm -hmm. and uh, like my brain's like, like you're like moving a million miles an hour, and uh, <laughs> apparently, like my my one of my best friend's sisters was there, and she was like at the mains or eating, and I'm like having like a meeting with somebody from the mains or whatever. She's walking around showing me all this stuff, what they want. I'm like, okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then she said like, apparently, like I just like she, mains lady must have told me something, and then I just like zoned out and she said that like i just made straight eye contact with her and then like went back like and she said that it was like awkward like like and i must have just been like looking that way zoning out and then <laughs> and then i came back and then uh and i, and I just had all this stuff on my mind it's it going crazy and but it was just, i just started laughing because i was like she was like <laughs> uh, my buddy told me he was like yeah he was like did you just ignore my sister and i was like i honestly didn't even see her man <laughs> like i was i felt so bad about it but it was so funny but but uh i was gonna say so i was like i'm like you i have Everything in my mind. Going oh, yeah. On. As you yeah. can tell through this podcast, I'm all over this place. <laughs> but uh, so last night I had uh, Duffy, the guy who edits all my podcast audio, and then my wife with me. And I have this like 10 foot whiteboard in the house. And I was like, oh, man. And, and I'm not in the house, in the garage. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to write down like everything I have in my mind for Real Talk, basically. And like, just because like it, 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 there's so much going on right now. That oh, I a flowchart helps so yeah, much. Yeah, exactly. So it just was just like, yeah, it was just me writing everything bubbles. out. And it was, Top to bottom covered and stuff, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" I, I was like, "I just feel so much better because I can look at this and oh. at least have an idea of like, not like, oh, I thought about this once, going to forget about it till I randomly think about it again." Mm -hmm. No, that's that's a great problem to have though. A lot of people don't have enough to say. Yeah, they, they could even fill up one sheet of paper what they could talk about. That's true, and it's you like, have a whole whiteboard and you ran out of room. <laughs> yeah, that's that is very true. What a good way to look at it, because and I think it's like. 
people get so like invested in their phone or look at their phone and then it's like almost like you're consuming all this stuff without producing anything. Oh, yeah. And like, I mean, everybody falls in the trap of it. Everybody does. But I mean, give or take. But uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then the people go through the extremes of like no social media or, oh, yeah. or you know what I mean? It happens. Yeah, exactly. And and, uh, and I get it, obviously, too, because fuck. <laughs> I get, yeah. I'm overwhelmed. And it's like I almost want to just set up like hours of my day of like, hey, you should just post for like this long or like, you know, look. Take in for this long, but then again, you can on apps you can set timers that'll lock you out after a certain oh, amount they, of time. Oh, will lock you out? Because yeah. I know some of them will be like time time limits up today, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like whenever you enter my password, yeah. keep going. Yeah, that, that's a problem too. If you know the password though of like the timers, it's like, well, I mean, I know it, so <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's well, I'm not like, like no, like, there's no repercussions of it. I mean, I have self control, but not that much. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Let's exactly. be reasonable here. That's funny. So when you're doing a gig and you're taking requests. Mm -hmm. What's the most requested song? You can name like a couple of them because I'm sure there's a, a few with Freebird or something. There, of course, there's a typical cliche request Freebird or um, Wheel. I I always play that one because oh. people love it. No, no it's a good it's, sing along it's, one. It's I I've, I love I've loved that song for a while. It is the most overplayed song for acoustic guitarists <laughs> in the no country. <laughs> it or maybe world. I don't know, but yeah. There's so many people that hate it, but I, it's still a great song. No, people it is love it. it. If, if you want to get people dancing and singing, that's guaranteed well, to do And it. I really like because it's a song that, like, you can take that song and make it your own. Exactly. Make it your own, you exactly. Know what I, mean? I mean, Darius Rucker did it. There's some songs where it's like you cannot play that a different way. Cause, or you can, but obviously there's yeah. ways. But, like, yeah. people know it a certain way. Where, like, Wagon Wheel, it's like people will, can appreciate, like. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it was written by, like, two, three people in the first place. Like, Bob so, Dylan was one of the writers ask, on So it. is Bob Dylan the first person? I, is, I don't know the exact history. I know Bob Dylan had a hand in writing it in the beginning. And Old Crow Medicine Show, they came out with the version that everyone knows. Darius, Darius, Darius Rucker. Rucker we brought it back to life. Blew it up yeah. into the mainstream, and and I played how, at my shows. What about and, how do you do? So like, let's say you're doing a cover. Like Darius Rucker did a cover of a song that already mm -hmm. existed. Do you have any idea of like music rights on that? Like, how does that work? You have to get a mechanical license in order to re record it. It's a license that um, allows you to record someone else's song and profit from it, basically. And profit from it, and but a portion of that oh, goes you, back to you. Either you can either set it so a portion of that the royalties will go, go to back that? to whoever owns or the publishing rights for it, or you can pay a flat fee. Yeah, but a lot of the time um, you can pay the flat fee for the mechanical license, but. The artist will still get royalties, or the the whoever owns the publishing for that will get the royalties from it, from like airplay and stuff. It all it's, it's super complicated. Oh, really? Who, like BMI or ASCAP, the different publishing or, um, companies, they mm -hmm. they would do collect royalties off of plays. So like oh. if if like in a theater, they listen to music. Usually they have one of those licenses that they pay. For the artist to be able to perform those songs, mm -hmm. so it's 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 weird. A lot of restaurants they have to have license on to play music over the speakers. Oh, Every time a song really? is played on one of those, someone gets paid. Oh, well, oh yeah. well, I mean, restaurants generally have like the system of you know it's some type of jukebox or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. All those like I've got songs on like the Touch Tunes jukebox. Mm -hmm. I no one picks them really anymore, mm -hmm. <laughs> but but they're there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun. That's funny. And so, do you uh, have? Are you working on anything right now, like an album or EP or? I have over the last year. I've written just about a whole record. Oh. But what I. Is, what's the whole record? How many songs? Like I, I've got ten songs ten right songs, now. Yeah. yeah. Um. Most of them are are hundred percent finished. A couple of them, I'm just working on either instrumentation or just fiddling with a few lyrics here and there. Mm -hmm. But it's ninety nine point nine percent done. Oh, gotcha. Written wise, now recording wise, yeah, yeah, there we go. I haven't even started the first step of it. I've really? been so busy with work. I, I got a promotion at work this last year mm -hmm. and uh, last April. I became program manager of the of. At my work, what I used to work for. So now I'm running the program. So I needed to make up money during the, the pandemic because I wasn't playing as much. But now I'm managing the program and I'm playing more than I ever I have in my say, life. It seems like you're pretty busy right oh, now. I'm playing either. How many days or, yeah, how many shows a week you think? It Give or varies, take, obviously. Usually, usually I have at least one show a week. But more often than not, I've got two, three, four shows a week. And so you, you go to work and then. Yeah, I'll, I'll be working during the day, and second o'clock out, hop yeah. in my car, hit the road, 
or I can work on the road. I can get my computer. I could be sitting in the parking lot all day, but I'm working. Oh. Got my phone, my computer, or I could just be. Oh, so at least you can kind of work on the go then. Yeah, yeah. I don't so do that little... that often because it's because work can be kind of stressful. So and I like to be like in my annoying to zone. work like in your car or something. I like do that. have a little nifty. You have a little thing that's... It hooks on my steering wheel. Oh, so I have, you have a table basically. I have a little table. It's got my computer on it. I have a pull out. Um, mouse pad on oh, it. Okay. So I've got the mouse pad and my keyboard. I've got everything I need. Yeah. But it, it sometimes when you're just working, you just want to be able to just get away from your computer. When you're working in your car, you're trapped. You're literally, yeah, trapped. And then you're like, well, yeah. I can't really. And but, then you're like, and it's still like, even though that you have set up, it's still like a little cramped. You know what I mean? Yeah, and my mouse like, is super tiny too. So it's like, <laughs> if you like. You with your hands, you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then so. We talked about recording in the beginning, but like, so what's the process of, uh, like, is it just really expensive? Is it really expensive to record like, in stu- cause you have to, you have to, I mean, basically cause you want to, right? You want the good quality. You have to record in the studio, right? Yeah. I, I've been spoiled by Nashville with the quality of the recordings there. Cause with my old band's recordings, we did the real deal. We went to a professional studio, went to the ruckus room in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, Jamie Tate was our, um, our sound engineer for it. And uh, he's done records for anybody from Taylor Swift to Luke Bryan and anybody who's anybody in Nashville. He's even recorded uh, Johnny Cash. Wow. And he's currently working on a um, a Marty Stewart record right now. Really? He's just, he's one of the best, he's got the best pair of ears Mm -hmm. you can, you can get. And so I've been spoiled by that, which which is, uh, it's great experience to have under my belt, but also, Anything I record at home does not even come close to what I wanted to sound like. So gotcha. I've got decent equipment, not great. I've got a, a good mic. I got a Rode microphone that I modified the interior parts with part expensive parts from other microphones oh, to really? emulate. Oh, really? So it's like a Rode mic, but it's got parts of like a Telefunken in it. Really? Which is like a... 20 grand mic and so i've got different components to make it sound it? really that's pretty similar cool. but it's it's still only like a 700 dollar mic i feel like uh, i always hear for mics like road and sure pretty much those are like the two are i mean at least for like uh sure. consumer consumer level yeah whatever. consumer level sure when it comes to performing live sure is one of the top ones the sure sm58 is the classic microphone oh, that's, sorry that's what this is oh yeah so, <laughs> that's a it, it just it just doesn't have the top to it. Oh, okay, so that's what it is. It just has the thing, and then you put the yeah the so pop filter that's, on. That's it. what that's sorry, the number like, one as mic. As soon as you said that, I was that's like, what that, I was asking because you're like, what are these? And I was like, I don't know, like man. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> it sounded like it. I'm like, wait a minute. It yeah, doesn't it, look you're like, like it. it doesn't. Yeah, especially with this this bigger one on the top mm. of it, like it really doesn't look like it. No. Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. sorry, it is S M. Yeah, for live music, sure has been one of the most preferred brands for a long time. Um, I mean, I don't expect them to pay me after this. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. And then another one. Come on, sure. Is Rode has been really popular with like recording and yeah. like. Yeah, and they're good. They're really big in camera gear. Like camera gear. Like yeah, camera you get the microphones, lapels, and lapels. You get the wireless ones. Yeah, too. the ones that go on top of your boom mics. Everything mm-hmm. they have, like, and that's why I just knew the. They're they're good stuff. They're really good for podcasts. I see a whole bunch of stuff for podcasting and yeah. everything. Yeah, and they're popular and. And they're, they're just good. they're just a microphone company, pretty much. Pretty much. Right? Yeah, I think they make some accessories, I'm sure but they, I yeah. think they're they specialize in microphones. But and then like another brand, uh, Sennheiser, mm-hmm. they do they do some live stuff and they do some studio stuff, so they dabble in both. But they're they're really good in the studio too. Um, in terms of brands for studio work, you have like Telefunken, Neumann. And those are like those the, are the, again the pricey ones. Yeah, like there's like the the pre Soviet Neumann U eighty sevens can run twenty five, thirty, forty grand sometimes. Holy crap! Oh yeah. Are, are mics like? Can you get like an old mic that's a really good mic, like in the sense of like, a cl- like a classic sounding one almost? Because oh, I, I okay, well, I don't know what those microphones are. The 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 silver ones that like have all the lines in. Oh, it. Oh, yeah. Th- those l- look the cool. They I, like, look cool. They, they make look... you think of like like hot rods yeah, and Elvis. Yeah, and yeah, all that. exactly, exactly. But I don't know. They how, still make those. Yeah, do they? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're not that expensive. You can you can get them for your studio if you want. They're just like <laughs> I think they're like one. My sound guy's like, please don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, you'll get over the look pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, though. They're exactly. cool for a little bit, but I've never had the urge to buy one. Yeah, yeah. I just know that. Yeah, they just look cool. If I played rockabilly, hell yeah. Or like, one. or like for like a music video or something. It seems like you for know, video, cool... music video people use them a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot and of I the think... new ones that they make, um, they're like the chrome ones, mm-hmm. but they have LEDs inside it, so they glow blue oh, out, different of the out of the. That's pretty yeah, sick. So they look really cool. That actually is that. That's really cool. But I mean, they sound great. Um, they just sound just like a 
generic live microphone unless mm-hmm. you pay for like the really good ones mm-hmm. and they're different they're, they have their own kind of thing going on mm-hmm. and it's just not for everyone though yeah yeah no i yeah. agree i agree and so uh you just play all over central valley pretty much or where do you, where do you play my territory um since pandemic has been where's your turf <laughs> my <kidding>. turf <laughs> my, my circuit runs yeah. from um like fresno up to sacramento and then um, up in the Sierras, up and down. Yeah, I was gonna say. And not too much in the Bay right now. With my old band, we used to play, but a lot of the contacts, I've, I've, just not fallen out. It's just a lot of people have rotated businesses. No, well, as, so. especially during the pandemic too. Like, I oh yeah, like, like. Oh, in the Bay area, like no one's booking live music or. It's a lot. It's a different animal over there. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, I'm <laughs> like. It, they it, still it's, want your yeah. It's, it's like yeah, it's way different. You gotta have like I can't believe that they're, they're, you have to have a booster someplace. It's like you have to have a booster. I'm like mm-hmm. that's so. I wild. went to Seattle uh, in you went to not too long ago, right? Yeah, the January I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was the beginning of February? I don't remember. But every every single place we went, we had to show proof of, proof of vaccination. That's why. It's and like, and I mean, all right, take off your mask. You can eat now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, it, it's crazy, man. I mean. I, the main reason I dig it, I mean, I don't want to go into politics. No, but don't worry. I mean, I'm vaccinated yeah. too, so yeah. don't worry. There we go. I mean, I, I, I've got fans on both sides of the spectrum and I, I and I, I, under, I see. I see both sides. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I see both sides to it. It's like, I always talk, it's like such a polarizing. It's like either this way or that way. It's like, no, no, no I, there's I a good medium, you guys. There's a good medium. So like, yeah. you don't have to be. There I understand like, why you'd want to understand why you don't want to. Yeah. I understand why you want to wear a mask. I understand don't, why you don't want to wear a yeah. mask, but. <laughs> But I chose to get vaccinated because as a musician, I'm everywhere. Yeah. I'm meeting a lot of people. I'm shaking a lot of hands, whether it's if I wanted to not get other people sick or I didn't want to get sick myself. Yeah. I just It didn't. just makes the most sense. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm all over the place. I'm, I'm talking to tons of people a day. I'm singing. Speed, yeah, I was going to say, you're air. like, and then like if you're in a crowded room full of people, it's like, yeah, well, I like, mean, I, I got my breathing their air as well. <laughs> exactly. I got my vaccine early. Um, I mean, I got the J&J, bro. I got, oh, got limited, the J&J? limited edition, Dang. man. <laughs> no clotting over no, here, right? No, no. Okay, well, apparently, I know. I'm I got the Moderna, so I just got. I feel like I got hit by a truck the the, Dude, first, the next day. I so is that was that the one shot one too, or is that uh, two shots? You had to get a follow up. Oh, okay. The the first one was fine. The follow up, so that put me on my ass. The J and J, yeah, I I was on my fucking ass. Mm-hmm. I was sick, and like I I was like, not that I didn't want to get the vaccine. I was just like, if I'll get it, like if I have to, yeah, but like whatever, like kind of. And then my wife was like, hey, like uh, I made appointments for us. I was like, okay, like whatever. Okay. And then like that night, like I was, so like, you I, had got the, to. I got the chill. <laughs> I got the chills. I was like super sick. And then I was just like, look, I looked at her and I said, you did this to me. <laughs> she was just like, I'm so sorry. I was like, but I just like, but the next day I could believe fine. And she was like, kind of, yeah. she was obviously, she felt fine the first day. The next day she was like all, she was like groggy for a couple of days. And I was yeah. just like the next morning I had a little headache, but I was fine. It took, hit me 24 hours afterwards. I was driving to San Luis Obispo. Yeah, I'm fine. And, I'm good. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I just start like I got the shot the day before. Uh huh. It's about five o'clock. I've been driving it slow. I just almost get to Paso Robles, and all of a sudden, I feel like whoa. Started getting a massive headache. Started getting the chills while driving. Like I gotta get to my hotel. And I got oh. there, checked in, lay down, and just sweated all night. And I was just sweating all night long. Were you cold supposed sweats. to go play a sh- gig that night? No, was, I was there for work. Oh, okay. That's, so I I mean, to, that's better, honestly. I had that's to go easy. dig up utility poles <laughs> and hike through mountains the next day. And I was like, oh, please, God, let me be okay the next day. I woke up, still had a little bit of headache. Yeah, but Ellie, that's how I was. I was like a little, sleep. I was like little kind of like I could feel that I wasn't 100%, but I was yeah. like, I'm better than freaking what I was. when. My, it was crazy because mine was like 12 hours later, I was like feeling it instantly My, yeah i think that's about it was about 12 hours no it was about 24 hours for me yeah but no it, gets, it hits everyone differently too. yeah yeah that's weird so how, how long have you been growing your beard man have, when was the last time you clean shaven actually oh man um last time i was clean shaven 2011 holy shit really the shortest i've had it is a little shorter than you have it right now okay just like a little since then a little longer than like five o'clock yeah i stopped shaving i don't know why i just stopped shaving and then someone complimented my stubble so i kept growing then someone complimented my beard so i kept it growing and then eventually i i didn't touch it Uh not trimming nothing for two years it got down to like here i mean i think it was like a a little less than a foot a year. Dang. Had it for two years. Then I grew it for another year. Got down almost to my belly button. <laughs> and then I cut it back to about right here. And I had it like 
about you know, between about here really. for a couple of years, and then uh, about 2018. Um, I went through an yeah. identity crisis and I chopped it off oh, really? a little bit shorter than that. I just took bu- clippers and just clipped it all off. Really? So, and yeah. then uh, now it's been at this long, I, I medium had, length. I had it short for a couple of years for like. Yeah, it's been about like the, or since I've seen you. I've around. had it like this since last, not not fall 2021. I've had it. I've had about like this since. How do you measure December you know 2020? I mean? Like when you're like, cause like you're growing it, like, and then you're like, do you just go with like the the buzzers around it, kind of like some of these or you, scissors? You scissor it. I use scissors for like some. I I don't really trim the mustache too much. Isn't it hard though? I mean, you you always get like, while you eat, you, just, you always get stuff in it. Cause I when I have a beard, like I I oh, will go I will go from beard to mustache. I I've been rocking the mustache for a while recently. Yeah, you had a sweet mustache, dude, man. Dude, my wedding, my mustache was ridiculous. Oh. It was like I I it was like all curled. I had up it like that. Everything. That was the last time I was clean shaven. Was when I had the mustache and I cut that off and then I started growing the yeah. beard. Mustaches are weird because I feel like sometimes it's just like it'll grow pretty good and then other times because I like I I always cut my mustache right here, mm-hmm. but then it starts getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Yeah, you you know th- what I, mean? I got. A really small. Oh, see, thin mine just lip. starts getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and then I'm like, I have to trim this because like it'll literally just like grow like like straight. Oh yeah. And so then, and but then I leave the the mustache, the, the twirly part of the mustache. That that stuff will grow like almost like a handlebar. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. it'll just grow down, and then I'll just start curling. If I let that. my mustache do a thing, it hangs down right in front of my face. You can't even see my mouth. Like. That's why I'm surprised because I feel like with singing, maybe it would like get in the way or something. It gets stuck in the harmonica sometimes. Oh, you ever like pull it? You're like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah my you God. See me, you see me in pain. Like, you just know my rock beard's me, stuck. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. 100%, man. <laughs> uh, I've lost many a beard hairs to my microphone and my harmonica. Oh. So yeah, I, I've I kept the beard like this for a little over a year, about mm-hmm. a year now. And it's, it's it, I like it. It's. So I can still have the beard, but I don't have to shampoo. It's a good medium a whole length. Long yeah, beard, though. it's not. It's not longer than your hair. Like, I mean, it is, but it's not uh, longer than like. <laughs> Start losing my hair. So I've, I shave my head now. You're like, but... I'm gonna. I'm just gonna rock the uh, beard now. Then. Exactly. My hair just flipped. It's yeah. upside down now. You're like, actually, I grow it here now, you guys. So it's not. Uh... I didn't go bald. It migrated. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> if you could be like at a concert for anybody, dead, alive. Who do you think you choose? Anybody. Anybody. Should have gave me these questions ahead of time. I know. Sorry, man. I like to <laughs> no. put people on the spot here. No, that's fine. Uh, anybody, dead or alive, or or you you can name a couple people. Honestly, like like I like. I would love to. I mean, I I let's start off. Yeah, old, go ahead. old old yeah. old. I'd love to go see Mozart or oh, Beethoven really? or Vivaldi yeah. in those times. That'd be great to be in the audience witnessing one of the concertos when they're brand new. Yeah. And um, I think I think I I, I wish I wish like or somebody... Bach, you know it'd be Bach. I'd have to say uh, okay, who, Bach would be who, one of my Bach? favorite. Sorry, Johann Sebastian Bach, okay. uh, like the like the cello suite. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'd like to hear that the first time an audience has ever heard that. I just damn, that's a that's the, uh, that that'd like be that. go back yeah. for class. I, I I love all kinds of music. Yeah, then I'd love to see. Um, I would love to have seen Jimi Hendrix, of course. Yeah, That's Jimmy so Hendrix cliche. As a guitarist. Cash or something like Johnny that. Cash would have been great. Like Johnny Cash, like back when he was like, playing day. for prisons and stuff. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, I mean, that I, would be bad. I didn't want to be in the prison. No, but, but I, Merle Haggard got to see him when he was at Folsom. Oh, really? Merle Haggard was in prison when Johnny Cash played at Folsom. That's sick. Uh, oh, That's it's, dope. It's, it's cool. That's really cool. But uh, I don't know. I, there's so many people I don't even know if I could choose, man. I, yeah. It sounds that's like a cop out, but it's true. No, I mean, I think your first response is pretty good, though, because, like, I don't think no many people are going to, like, I want to hear Beethoven. Like, yeah. I want to hear him play his Fifth Symphony or whatever right? it is. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. It's just, it, that's... No, and especially, and it's funny, because back then, like, I wish there was time travelers that we could, like, because, you know, people back then were probably like, oh... This new kid is playing this music like a little too like crazy. Like that's not the way we do it here, Beethoven. Like you know no, what I mean? No, he, but they, like they, Bill and Ted get beat yeah, up. Yeah, man. yeah, exactly. Beethoven. And then I want to go back and be like, hey, this is Cardi B, you guys. This is money. Like or something like <laughs> something ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the world is changing, people. <laughs> the world <laughs> like, would catch on fire. If Cardi yeah, B exactly. Way back in like, time. Be happy that he's still playing piano. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like want to know what the pianos become, guys? You can you do you play piano too? A little bit. A little bit. A little yeah, bit. I'm not proficient at it but i can play stuff uh, i've written some stuff on it and mm, some new it. songs i've written for the record are gonna have piano on it so how so how long can the recording process take like i mean like when do you think i mean i'm sorry if i'm like if you don't know either but like 
when do you think you'll have like your album recorded, like or like something coming out? That's hard to say right now because yeah. because work is just is crazy. crazy right now. We're going through major changes right now, mm-hmm. um, and I'm playing so much on the weekends that I don't give myself the time yeah. to do anything. Um, but essentially, my I mean, timeline. When, 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 when would you like it? You know what I mean. Yeah. I would love it out yesterday, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> I would like to have something, whether it's. A record or at least a single or an EP, just yeah. like a collection of like two, three songs mm-hmm. out end of summer or fall, mm-hmm. some, somewhere around then. That'd, well, that'd be, be cool. nice. So, well, I've heard, I don't know, you posted one, I think it's like Drone Shots is the... That was, I just recorded so, that on my phone. All of it on your phone? All of it on my phone. It, the GarageBand app on my Apple phone. Really? It's oh, yeah. sound, I mean, for like... Cue I'm, the sound clip right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, no, I, it sounds really good though. I mean, like I, I, I was like, it, I don't know how you just your, your your style, your vibe is a little country, a little folk, little yeah. It, it's 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 what I Mumford, like. Mumford, a little, you know what I mean. A little like, Mumford, a little Childers, yeah, a little, yeah, exactly. It's Lord little, Huron. Yeah, little, yeah, 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 yeah. It's all those, yeah, honestly. It's but just I some really, of my favorite artists. I just mash them up into what. No, what, I really, I like the vibe of it, and I really like uh, like. I that that type of style because because I, I do like music videos and stuff, but that's mm. why I hit you up too when I was like, hey, like, I'd love to. I just wish I had a song recorded yeah, and ready to go. Exactly, exactly. So. Yeah, because because uh, it's like you could find a, any rapper you want. You're first and you in line do, for video. Yeah, dude, let me know, man. I would love to do something. <laughs> Since and, just the, first. and just yeah, exactly. And just the vibe of it too is just like, I mean, it's different than a lot of stuff around here. I guess you know what I mean. Yeah, that also helps them get a lot of shows too. I've noticed. It's me. It sets me apart. Just my genre and my instrumentation. It, it lends a lot more venues reaching out to me versus oh, versus you having to reach out to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it. The word got around that I play country music. I play Americana. I play folk. I'm very versatile, and there's not too many people that do all that those genres. Mm-hmm. So that is a big positive for me. Yeah, so. and especially in the area, and too that, and that's like one of the things too where I feel like the Central Valley, like. Like, and I'm sure, like, let's say, so your old band, you were playing with your old band, what year, sorry? That was, like, 2012 to 2018, the first half of 2018. Okay, and so let's say from there compared to, like, does it feel like there's almost, like, more, like way more opportunities and shows now? And in the, the Central Valley specifically? I'm more busy than I was yeah. then. I mean, we were playing bigger shows. We were opening up for, we were Bands doing, like, like, Cat that. Country LAC. We were oh, opening okay. for, like, Joe Nichols. Uh, Jake Owen. Oh, we really? We opened up for American Idol contestants. That's we were cool. doing like big name artists like Mark Chestnut mm-hmm. and like people who've like won like multiple awards, sold gold records. Mm-hmm. We were doing big things, but not as often. And now I'm doing smaller shows, but I'm busier than ever. I'm making a living doing it. Yeah. I mean, I, I still have my other job because I like to have stability and something to. To catch me when I fall. Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, that's not the only reason or, I have it, but, but you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's good to have a grown-up job too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially these days. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I have. I got my photography, videography, and now finally I'm gonna got sponsors on the podcast. Thank you, sponsors, whoever's listening out there. Really appreciate you guys. But yeah, it's just been a long not road. Corona. To, yeah, I know. Well, I've been thinking about getting like I want to get an official beer of the podcast, and so I know some breweries. I play no, a lot of. No, breweries. exactly. I, I mean, I mean the one that. Yeah, I mean like. I mean, there's Blaker, there's uh, there's Dust Bowl, and the the one I think that like might be a, a good fit is Tioga Sequoia, and mainly because like I'm on podcasts all about the Central Valley of California. Oh yeah, yeah. And so think about you know Tioga Sequoia, they have not only Half Dome, Firefall, those ones they have beers that's like Highway 99 and like other things that I know people. There we go, there we go, and that's what I was. But yeah, it's like one of those things where I'm just like kind of trying to think like okay, like like because now like. Now I'm in the state of like, okay, how can I've I've grown the podcast to be a platform basically now. Mm-hmm. So like, how how can I? Start? It's only growing more and yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Every every week I check your followers and they're going up, man. I mean, you got people listening, your views Dude, are going up. People, yeah, a lot of people are freaking. Hey, from at the end of last year to this, like already, like, and I mean, it, it, it's it's like it's it's cool because it's all organic too. It's, That's it's what, organic and authentic. Yeah, That's the biggest thing. It's authentic. I mean, it's real talk. Yeah. <laughs> And what not? I'm just kidding. <laughs> and what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but no, I yeah, I agree with you. And and that's the thing too. Like, 
like there was never anybody trying to talk about anybody from the Central Valley prior to that. Oh, yeah. Not that I know. Like there was other podcasts, but it was more of like people and their friends talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, before this, the only place I really knew about anything similar, kind of close to this, was like the college radio stations. Yeah, they yeah. do. They play like local college music, maybe a short little interview, but that's just about it. Uh-huh. They do like an. Uh, like a local hour, they play all local artists, but not never no no real podcasts. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. At least ones that I don't know about that I haven't heard about. Yeah, and I, there was a few other ones, and I've like reached out. I always reach out anytime I see anybody in Central Valley doing a podcast. I always reach out like, hey, oh yeah, I, I love what you're doing. Keep it up, basically. It, you like, got to support each other. Yeah, community. exactly. Be like Nashville, just support each other. No, yeah, and, th- and that's what I've too that I've realized like from this is that like. Like this, I think the Central Valley gets a bad rep, and I'm sounding like a broken record. Everybody has that. a bad rep about something. Yeah, no, exactly. But but for a long time, it was just like everyone talking bad about the area, or like, and like what I've come to realize, at least like within the within the art community, or or just creative people in general, is that people are people want to support people, people want to they help do, out yeah. people, and it's cool to see that. And like until like I really started this podcast, I didn't get to see it as much as I necessarily yeah, see it now. until you you get to know it, you don't really know it's there. So yeah, that's, exactly. That's the hard thing about the valley is. A lot of it's a little, there's a lot of it's hidden until you get like, you still stumble upon it or you just show up and someone, so someone's playing at a bar or word gets passed around. Yeah, yeah, no, that's it's, very true. It's, it's, it's very, gold it's here. still a small town. It's just the small towns. When I say it's the, the, the Central Valley is basically like, obviously like Fresno is a big city, Sacramento is a big city. Yeah. But it's just like a collection of a whole bunch of small cities, like mm-hmm. so many small cities. Like, I mean, there's a lot of cities like, you know, Modesto, Turlock, Merced are all like yeah. in that middle range of like, they're, they're bigger cities, but they're not a big city. You know what yeah. I mean? And so it's cool to me that like, like that's why there's like, that's what you're saying. There's like so many like hidden gems. Cause it's like, there's not an exact outlet for any of those there's places. There's gold in them hills. Yeah, exactly. We're in California, people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then I'm trying to think. Uh, I mean, I honestly, I think like our conversation has been really good. You're gonna play some songs for us. I right? am, yes. Okay, if you be, allow me yes, to. Yes, yes, I will allow it to you. So you're gonna open up with. I mean, you'll have opened up with the podcast with the song, and you're gonna end the podcast with the song. Perfect. But uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But Scott, thank you for being here. I really thank you so really much for having me. It. Let's shake hands. Pleasure. Have, have drop a couple the microphone. Let's try that drop again. The, <laughs> drop the mic. Yes. <laughs> but I appreciate you being here, man. Thank I you. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Well, this next song is called Tell Me Everything. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Take care of yourselves. Tonight, I haven't felt like this in ages Yeah, I wanna keep turning your pages I can't put you down Then you might find it boring But girl, I wanna know your story All your shame and all your glories Just fill me in But tell me everything that there is to know about me Every little word, every line, every scar and tattoo Tell me all the things you feel I bet I felt them too I want to know all of you So I can love all of you Darling, lay your head on my shoulder on this bed And tell me all the things they did that made you want to run away Walk me down the dusty road, the memory of your youth And all that you've been through, just help me understand Tell me everything that there is to know about you Every little word, every line, every scar and tattoo 
Tell me all the things you feel I bet I felt them too I wanna know all of you So I can love all of you Tell you everything that there is to know about me Every little truth, every lie, everything in between I tell you all the pain I feel And how it set me free I want to know all of you I want you to know all of me I want to know all of you So I can love all of you Well guys, thank you so much. My name is Scott Patrick. You can find me on all the socials at Scott Patrick Official. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. This is it. Real talk. What not?